You know, prairie birds are as, as fascinating as they are beautiful. Join us this week as nature photographer and guide Ron Hayes and I photograph sage grouse and sharp tailed grouse in the eastern high plains of Wyoming. Looks like that's it. Those birds are going to head back over the hill, try to find some cover, maybe feed a little bit, but it looks like we're probably done for the day. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. I'm glad to get that hot thing off my head. Yes, indeed. <laughs> but this is the trick, using these suits and blending in with terrain. Yeah, those birds were relaxed. They were right around us, actually literally cir circling us all morning. Yeah, we had them drumming right behind us and just, you know, displaying and you could hear them, but I wouldn't dare turn and try to look at them as much as I wanted to. Well, they're a, a short grass, kind of foothills uh, type of bird. The sharp-tailed grouse are in higher numbers in different parts of the state. We have limited number of sharp tails actually around the area where I live. The sharp tails will breed for approximately six weeks. Oh, that long? And they'll, they'll be fairly active. The, the sharp tails tend to visit the, the lek a little bit earlier than the sage grouse, and you'll get to peak numbers fairly early. The, uh, the reason that I like to photograph these leks early is because you get more females active early as the females begin to, to be bred then they move on and, and begin to nest and you lose, lose them off the wreck. One of the hardest things for me in a situation like this is being patient in the morning. You've got to get in here before daylight to photograph any of these grass species because they're going to, right at daylight they're going to come and land on this lek. So you can't just walk into the area after they're already on the lek. You have to already be in there well before sunrise. Get everything set up, get everything quiet and still, get ready, and just patiently wait. Sometimes that means that you could be sitting for an hour or better in the dark, just waiting. And this morning, the birds came in actually a little bit before the sun rose and started strutting. And so I had birds around me and I could hear their behavior and I could hear their calls and the strutting and the stomping of the feet, but I couldn't see even see anything yet. There's no need to even move and look through your camera and start tinkering with exposures until you know you have you know, more than enough light to start photographing by. Now early in the morning, that light's gonna be really low as the sun just peaks over the horizon. And for that reason, you're gonna have to jack up your ISO so that you can increase the shutter speed enough to stop the behavior of, the, of these animals. You're gonna have a whole variety of behaviors to photograph here. You're gonna have portraits of the birds sitting perfectly still. We had 
opportunities for the birds to, you know, spreading their wings and stomping their feet and, and making the little dance, the two males coming together and dancing around. Just this pretty fast motion, so you've got to have a fast enough shutter speed to stop that action. A little technique that I personally use, I kind of alternate between adjusting my shutter speed and adjusting my, my ISO. Adjust the ISO high first thing in the morning, and then as soon as the light changes, I'll drop that ISO a little bit. Then as the light gets a little bit brighter, I'll increase my shutter speed. The next time it gets brighter, I'll drop the ISO again. And I keep going ISO, shutter speed, ISO, shutter speed. And that way I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds. I'm kind of taking advantage of high, the highest possible shutter speed I can get, as well as taking advantage of the lowest possible ISO I can get away with. Because remember, in low light conditions, the high ISO is going to create digital noise. So, you know, that can ruin your image. That can actually make an image appear very soft.